everyone, this is Matt Show with Intro Stats and today we are starting a discussion about basic categorical data analysis. So we learned that there were sort of two types of data, categorical data, quantitative data. We said that categorical data was data that uh, describes, right, usually it's words that describe people or objects, like what city you live in or what state. Um, uh, what school do you go to? All of those kinds of good, good categorical questions. So today we're going to be looking at how to sort of start to analyze that data a little bit. So when you're talking about categorical data analysis, one of the key things is this idea of percentages and proportions. So this is probably a review for a lot of you, but think of a percentage as a part or an amount out of 100. Um, even the word per cent, per means divide or out of, cent comes from the Latin where we get the word hundred. So even the word per cent means out of 100 or divided by 100. So when we say 35%, we're saying 35 out of 100. Right? That's a good way to kind of think about it. Now, in stats though, what you're often looking for is this word proportion. So proportion, when you hear somebody in statistics say proportion or, or uh, type in the proportion into a computer program, they're looking for the decimal equivalent of a percentage. So if you convert the percentage back into um, its decimal equivalent by removing the percent sign, that's what we refer to as a proportion. I know some of you that have been in algebra classes, when you hear the word proportion, you're thinking cross multiply and solve for x, right? But that's really not what we refer, what we mean by proportion in statistics. When we say proportion in statistics, we mean the decimal equivalent of a percentage. Okay? So one of the first things you should be comfortable with is converting proportions into percentages and percentages back into proportions. So kind of some basic conversions, uh, but they're really important. You really want to make sure you're able to do this. A lot of times when a, uh, we get a, uh, we read an article, and it's given us a percentage and then we want to do some more advanced uh, analysis of that percentage, we have to convert the percentage back into a proportion before I can put it in the computer. Or if the computer does some kind of analysis, a lot of times they're going to calculate the proportions for each categorical variable. So it's going to be in decimal form, but then when I want to explain that to someone, I might want to turn it back into a percentage. So you really want to be comfortable going back and forth. So, to convert a uh, proportion, a decimal proportion, uh, into a percentage or convert a, propor uh, a percentage back into a proportion. So we'll start with converting a percentage into a proportion. Um, so, if we, uh, let's start with 33.7%. So how would I convert that back into its decimal equivalent, right? Well, remember, the word percent means per 100, right, or divided by 100. That's what this symbol means. When you see that percentage symbol, that symbol means divide by 100 or out of 100. So really, all you have to do is divide the number by 100. So 33.7% is really the same as, let's see, let's see, the, it would be 33.7 divided by 100. You could do that on a calculator or your cell phone. Um, another way you can do it, when you divide by 100, it actually moves the decimal two places to the left. So some of you may have learned a rule in the past where you say move the decimal two places to the left. And you could totally do that. If you move the decimal two places to the left, you would get 0.337. That would be the decimal proportion uh, equivalent of 33.7%. Okay, um, now we also want, um, suppose, well, suppose we have 100%. 100% is a very famous percentage, right? What would that be as the decimal equivalent? What would be the decimal equivalent of 100%? Some people have trouble with these because the percent, the percent symbol, uh, the decimal symbol is not there. But if you're, if you're using that rule about moving the decimal two places to the left, remember, the decimal, if you have a whole number percentage, the decimal's still there. It's just after the ones place. 
So even though it's not written, it's really right, right after that last zero. Now if I move that two places to the left, or I can simply do 100 divided by 100, and you would get 1, right? Yeah, 100% is the decimal equivalent. The, de uh, the decimal equivalent of 100% is 1. Uh, that's why a lot of times in um, proportion density curves, the, the area under the curve is usually equal to 1. All right, what about 6%? Well, again, same thing. Uh, you can write that as 6 divided by 100 in your calculator. By the way, don't do 100 divided by 6. It has to be 6 divided by 100. Okay? And if you did that on your calculator, you would have gotten 0 0.06. Now, I always have some of my students ask me, can I write this as 0 0.06? Yeah, sure, it's the same thing. It's equivalent. Though most of the time you will see somebody write 0 before then just to let you know there was 0 in the 1's place. Um, now, by the way, okay, what if, I, what if I'm using the move the decimal two places to the left rule? Well, again, I don't see the decimal there, right? It's just 6. But remember, the decimal is there. It's just after the ones place. The decimal always comes after the ones place in our number system. So if we moved it two places to the left, I would get 0 0.06. Okay? So if you see the percent sign, divide by 100. Now, what if I want to convert a decimal proportion into a per, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, decimal proportion into a percentage? What if I want to put a percent uh, sign on a number? So maybe these were numbers that were calculated by computer programs, and now I want to explain it to somebody, so I want to turn it into a percentage. Well, what could we do? Well, let's see. Again, if you have to, to convert a percentage into a proportion, you divide by 100. To go the other direction, you just have to multiply by 100. So I kind of think of it as multiplying by 100 and sticking on the percent sign, or taking 100% of the number. So you're basically always just multiplying the decimal by 100%. So if I did that, 0 0.018 times 100 and stick the per and uh, times 100%, I could do that in my calculator, 0 0.018 times 100. Or uh, when you multiply by 100, it does move the decimal two places to the right. Remember, multiplying by 100, the number's getting bigger, so the decimal has to go to the right. Dividing by 100, the number is getting smaller, so the decimal has to go to the left. So you could also just move the decimal two places to the right. Either way, you're going to get 1.8%. How about this one? Point, 0 0.873. Well, again, same thing. I can either multiply the number by 100, or I can move the decimal two places to the right. So 0 0.873 times 100, stick on the percent sign, which again moves the decimal two places to the right, and I got 87.3%. How about one? Again, I don't see the percent, I don't see the decimal, right? People always have trouble with whole numbers, uh, especially if you've learned this move the decimal two places to the left or two places to the right rules. Again, remember, the decimal is there, it's just after the ones place. So if you have a whole number like 1, the decimal is just after the 1. Or you can just think of it as 1 times 100. And stick on the percent sign. Well, 1 times 100 is just 100%. By the way, if I was using the rule of moving the decimal two places to the right, I would just go 1, 2, and then I would have to add a couple zeros as placeholders. Now this last one is a little interesting. A lot of times when you're dealing with proportions that are very close to zero, uh, later in the class we'll get into something called p-value, which is a very famous proportion, but it's usually numbers that are super, super low and super close to zero. When that's the case, computer programs oftentimes will write the answer in scientific notation. This is called scientific notation. Um, what this means is this times 10 to the negative 5, you may, by, by the way, even get this on a calculator. If you were calculating something on a calculator and it gets really close to zero, sometimes you'll see the calculator write it this way. So this, this times 10 to the negative 5 just means move the decimal five places to the left. Uh, if it was 10 to the negative 4, you'd move the decimal four places to the left. If it was 10 to the negative 3, you'd move the decimal three places to the left. So this, this means move the decimal 
Five places to the left. Okay, move the decimal five places to the left. So, um, so if we were doing that, think of it this way. Here's my 2.3, right? I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where my decimal really is. That's what this times 10 to the negative 5 means. Now, if you notice, I'm going to actually have four placeholders. So I'm going to need four zeros there. Okay? So that's really the decimal number that this is representing. You could put a zero in front of the decimal if you want and write it this way, but you should have four zeros after the decimal and then two, three. That would be the decimal proportion if I was typing that number into a computer program or something. But we, the question was, how do you convert that into a percentage? So the first thing I had to do was convert the scientific notation into actually decimal notation. And now I can go ahead and convert it, right? I can multiply by 100 or move the decimal back two places to the right. So if I do times 100%, which again moves the decimal, it's kind of like knocking off two of the zeros. So I'm going to get 0.0023%. Everybody okay there? Alright, so you should be pretty comfortable converting back and forth. By the way, don't forget to put the percent symbol on there. 0.0023% is very different than saying 0 0.0023. They're not the same thing. Alright, so usually when you get categorical data, one of the first things you want to know is the counts or the frequencies. Uh, sometimes we call that the amount, or sometimes you'll hear uh, stat books say the number of successes. Um, so that's sometimes denoted by a letter X, a number of, number of people or objects that had a certain characteristic in your categorical data. And then you have N, which is the total sample size. Uh, or sometimes you'll hear that as total frequency or total number of trials. Also, sample size is another, um, another name for the total number of people or objects in your...